Cześć, miło, Cześć. tu być. <laughs> Hello, uh, it's really nice to be here. And um, uh, I will start with a very nice uh, picture of Hadron Collider. Because uh, I believe that uh, we humans could be perceived as uh, elemental particles in a physical field. And depending all the on the forces of that field and other particles in this field that interact, we make our choices, we trespass things and make reactions that are actually shaping our lives. So what actually makes us what we are today? So I'm going to tell you how it looked in my life. So I was raised and born in Yugoslavia, in Belgrade, and as you heard, I was planning to become a first Yugoslavian woman in space, finish physics, go to the United States, and so on. But all of a sudden, without any plans, I ended up being caught up in the war, in isolation, oppression, without any means to find out what is actually going on in the, on, in the other street, because the media were completely controlled by government. And this is a, the war is a very aggressive situation, and I don't think that you have choice to be neutral. So what do you do in that case? And uh, that was 90s, we had the web. So in my life, it was a WW game changers. I experienced the web and the war. So if you're in the war and there is a web, what do you do? First, you connect, you go online, you're sitting in front of the PC, and you're looking for information. You're looking for these people sitting in these streets where you're interested of the event to see what they are writing, you know, what's really going on. The second thing you do, you connect with people that are thinking like you, and you say, what are we going to do about this? So if you are against the war like I was, you try to get together to cooperate and do something about it. So we did this and started to publish independent inf uh, information, and we had a site, website who is hosted, hosted in the United States. And then the third step is to connect with people that are far away and you're spreading the information. So during the NATO bombardment of Serbia, and we geeks used to call it uh, Windows 99, because the windows in Belgrade were all in duct tape, you know, because of the detonation, the, the window would break. So it was all stripped like that. And uh, we, we were all the time in front of the screens and looking for what? Looking for information. And then, during the war, when the warplanes would flew over Slovenia, you would get the message on the screen the planes are over Slovenia, you have a few, few seconds to run away. And these few seconds were saving lives. And this information, in the middle of the war and from the perspective of mainstream politics, were coming from enemies. So that was something really big. So later on, later on I uh, moved to Sweden. Um, Yugoslavia ceased to exist, to my great sorrow and disappointment, but uh, I came to a country that was uh, highly developed from that perspective, the perspective of the web and the usage of internet. So I got a chance to dig in, in, in uh, what we have on the internet and see what we really miss there. And from the perspective of my personal experience, I got so many things from internet. You know, it helped me navigate demonstrations in Belgrade. I knew where is the police. I was able to communicate with other people. I, I was playing backgammon with the, the general manager of uh, British Backgammon Association. Uh, during the sanctions, when it was forbidden to employ someone, you know, from Serbia, I was working for an organization in London. I was traveling to uh, Hungary to get paid. So I realized that there is something on the web that we, we are missing, that we are not looking at. And uh, like in physics, when we discovered the dark masses, we discovered discover that because we miss the mass in a, in a whole galactic plane. 
So it was the same on the web. I realized that we are missing something and that we should focus and look for the dark masses of the web. And there, I'm talking about social interactions. So what actually is going on there? So I did my PhD in analyzing web communities and what actually happens as a, how to say, um, implications of our usage on the web. And I analyzed immigrants and refugees from two parallel but different contexts. One, one direction, there were immigrants and refugees from Yugoslavia, so with the same cultural background, but they flew over and settled in all over the world, but they are present on the internet. And the other group that is contextually different, like analyzing immigrants that came to one country, in this case, uh, to narrow down in PhD research in Sweden. And while I was analyzing this, I realized that something is mutual for both groups. Uh, what we do on the web is actually that we build trust that is built on iterative positive experience. And this iterative positive experience brings people to trust even more, and then they want to share more things, and they offer help. But they offer help to the community that they never met before, and they don't expect anything in return. And this is uh, in science called diffuse reciprocity. And third thing that happens, we connect with each other. And we connect over classes, over time, and over space. So all of a sudden, we got a new field that not only changed how we communicate, but it also changed with whom we communicate. It took us much, much further. So what did we get with web communities? I mean, according to immigrants and refugees, I analyzed, you got live info center. This is how they call it. They say, whenever you go there, you find some information. Then they got new space to communicate. They can talk about, you know, uh, bad experiences, experiences about new countries, look for help, or something like that. And third, they have new relationship building tool. So what we got here is actually amplifier. We got a tool that amplifies everything we do. For, for people who are very social, this is going to be a tool that is helping you to be more social and fi find more contacts. For people that are not so social, that are introverts, it's going to help that you find information, but you don't have to get really in contact with so many people. So it's actually the tool that, is, that caters our needs. And then we come to this big question. So does it connect us or not? So in my research, I identified something interesting, and I call this uh, paradox immigrants, anti-immigrant paradox. While analyzing the communication of the group of people that arrived to Sweden, I realized that they are all online, sharing their experiences and having this uh, mutual identity feeling, feeling of belonging. And they, they talk about themselves like they are immigrants in a new country, and they spend a lot of time discussing uh, discrimination. So they are quite unified community. But then, when the discussion starts heated up, when the religion gets, a religious background gets in the discussion, all of a sudden this identity splits. Unifying identity of an immigrant now is becoming something different. And then the whole, the whole discussion becomes nasty, violent, they are against each other. And finally, when you analyze all threads and communication, you can see that people are against new people that are arriving. So how, how can that be? But this is again, you know, coming from the same, same argument that is actually amplifying what we need. The same tool that can connect us over continents can also disconnect us depending how we want to use the tool. So, how, how we should look at the, at the thing, you know? Perhaps we are asking, 
the, the wrong questions here. Because, uh, I mean, you, you can navigate your journey from the war situation to arrive to another country. You use the web to navigate through the city without uh, electricity, but you can find it on the mobile phone where to go if you're in the middle of demonstration. You know where is the police waiting for you. You can have conversation with, with your friend who is on the other continent and the other friend, you know, in the other city. You can find the doctor and so, you know, talk and have consultations with them. You can meet someone that you will never be able to meet because it belongs to some other class. So, I think the question should be rather, you know, that not does it connect us or not? Because this scientific question about this is kind of undermined with our activity. We are already using it. So, I propose that we should look at this from a different perspective, like what do we do with it? And uh, I think that the power is in our fingers. And uh, my proposal is that we should use it to cooperate, get together and do something meaningful with this. Thank you very much.